Hello and welcome to this video on decimal multipliers. Now this video is effectively a recap of how we can convert percentages to decimals, but also how we can use that in percentage problems. Now let's just say we wanted a quarter of 80. Now there's two ways to do it. You could just do 80 divided by four, but another way we saw in a previous video is we could replace the word of with times. So we're then doing a quarter times 80 and a quarter times 80 would be 20. Or we could even write that as a decimal. We could write that as 0 0.25, because that's what a quarter is a decimal, 0 0.25 times 80. And if you did that, you'd still get 20 as expected. So we can convert this fraction, this proportion, into a decimal, and we can convert the word of two times. And we can do exactly the same to find percentages of amounts. We can convert this percentage to a decimal, so 20% as a decimal. Well, as a fraction, we know that percent means out of 100. So it's therefore 20 out of 100. Of, we can turn into times, just as we did here, and then we've got 70. Now, 20 over 100, we could also write as a decimal as 0 0.2, 20% is 0 0.2. And just remember to convert from a percentage to a decimal, we can just divide it by 100. So we've now got 0 0.2 times 70, and that will give us 14. And we'll be looking at percentages of amounts and the different approaches we can use uh, in another video. And we call this thing here a decimal multiplier when it's used in the context of percentages. And the reason is is because by representing this percentage as a decimal and multiplying this by this decimal, it allows us to find that percentage of the amount. So let's use that for this variety of percentage scenarios. Let's just say you'd want to find 35% of something. What would you multiply by? You'd multiply by that percentage as a decimal, and that would be 0.35. Remember, we just need to divide that by 100. So 35 over 100, and we know that's 0.35. What about the second one? If we want to find 2% of something, well, 2% means 2 over 100, and 2 hundredths we could write as 0 0.02. So we can find 2% of something by just multiplying by 0 0.02, that decimal multiplier. What about C? How do we find a 10% increase? What do we multiply by? Now, the key here is to note that everything starts at 100% of its value. So if you have all of something, you have 100% of it. 100%, 100 out of 100 of it, that's all of it. So if something has a 10% increase, it starts at 10% and then it goes up by 10% to 110%. So we just need to convert 110% to a decimal. Now remember to convert from a percentage to decimal, we'll just divide it by 100 and 110 divided by 100 moves the decimal place twice, so it moves once, twice, it'd be 1.1. So therefore, if we multiply a number by 1.1, we would increase it by 10%. What would be the decimal multiplier for a 5% decrease? Well, it starts at 100%, it reduces by 5%, it's now dropped to 95%. So we're effectively finding 95% of its value in order to find a 5% decrease. Now 95% as a decimal, it is 0 0.95, so we times by 0 0.95. And what about if we wanted 10% of something? Well, we just times by 10% as a decimal, which is just 0 0.1. And finally, what about a 1.2% increase? So if something starts at 100%, goes up by 1.2%, it's now 101 0.2% of its value. So if you move the decimal point twice to divide this by 100, convert it to a decimal once, twice, we got 1.012. And it's nice to have a sense that that is going to be right. If I times something by one, it doesn't change its value, it stays the same. So therefore, if I times by a number which is just slightly more than one, then I know it's just going to slightly increase the value. And indeed, when you have a 1.2% increase, that's quite a small increase. So indeed, we wouldn't expect the value to change by very much. Similarly, when we have a 5% decrease, the value is not decreasing by very much. And we're timesing by a number which is quite close to one, only just slightly less than one. 
And if timesing by one doesn't change it at all, then timesing by a value just slightly less than one is only going to decrease it by a small amount. So we kind of get a sense of whether the number we're timesing by is correct.